What's up guys, Swift here covering everything Chicago Bears. Today I'm talking about the five biggest needs of the entire off season with different routes to fill each hole. I believe our five biggest needs stand out and need to be addressed this off season. Most of our improvement needs to come from the trenches. I've spoke about it in depth, but just wanted to touch a bit on it today as well. I believe our five biggest needs are three tech, pass rusher, right tackle, center, and wide receiver. These will be main positions of focus for this offseason when it comes to the draft and free agency. I will cover other positions as well later, but I will be digging deep at our most important positions of need. I'm going to talk a little bit about each position and give a couple of different ways that Ryan Poles can address the issue. Let's get right into it. I don't want to waste any time. I'm going to start right at our biggest need, three-tech defensive tackle. It's the key to Matt Eberflus's defense and probably the single biggest position that Ryan Poles must address this offseason. Thankfully, there are plenty of potential options. I've done my free agent defensive tackle video, so I won't rehash too much here, but there were quite a few options, including my top two in free agency, were Deron Payne and Draymond Jones. I like Draymond Jones from the Broncos a lot. A couple people have him listed at defensive end, but I think he is a perfect three tech. As far as Deron Payne, he gets all the press, but Jones might be an even better fit. That being said, Poles should have at least a chance to address the three tech spot in free agency. If he misses out in free agency, the draft has some very intriguing options as well. The top two are first round prospects, Jalen Carter and Brian Brzee. I think both players fit the mold of what Eberflus is looking for at the position. It comes down to where we end up picking after we trade down and how the board falls, but if the front office falls in love with Jalen Carter, it could affect our trade down options. There are also possibilities outside of the first round, like Florida's Gervin Dexter or Wisconsin's Keanu Benton, who will be at the Senior Bowl. I also really like Michigan's Mozzie Smith, although he may be a better fit at nose tackle, but he could play either spot. The draft has a lot of interesting options at 3-tech, but nowhere near as deep as edge rusher. This year's draft class is especially deep at pass rushers, which is the next position I want to address. Travis Gibson and Dominique Robinson simply did not get the job done this year, but they showed potential. Alquadine Muhammad, meanwhile, was a non-factor. It's imperative that Ryan Poles adds talent to the pass rush this offseason. Finding a three-tech is going to help the entire defensive line, but we need more talent off the edge as well. The free agent class isn't quite as good, but there are a few options. Meanwhile, this draft is especially deep at edge. This could easily be one of the best edge rush draft classes in the last decade or more. So who are the free agent options? The top guy is Saints defensive end Marcus Davenport, with the next option being Yannick Nagoku, but there are some underrated options as well like Arden Key. I'll have my defensive end video done sometime this weekend. The draft is where things get really interesting though, starting with Will Anderson Jr. and Tyree Wilson, but the depth is where it gets special. Tons of talent should remain at edge entering day two. Guys like Zach Harrison, Will McDonald, Isaiah Foskey, Nolan Smith, Derek Hall, and many others. The talented defensive end is extremely impressive, which gives Poles even more flexibility this offseason. Edge rusher needs to be addressed, possibly with a free agent and a high draft pick, but we don't have to select a pass rusher in the first round. There is plenty of depth available at this position. I actually believe this year's class of pass rushers could end up being really special. Next up, we switch sides to the offensive line. I feel like we have to address the center position and right tackle. I'll talk about right tackle first, which has some interesting free agent options like Mike McGlinchey, 
Jawan Taylor, Isaiah Wynn, and Caleb McGarry, among others. I think Poles will have a chance to add a veteran tackle in March. My free agent video on offensive tackles should be out in the next day or two. If he goes against the free agent route or wants to double down in the draft, there are some intriguing options at tackle as well. Guys like Paris Johnson Jr., Darnell Wright, and Broderick Jones all could be plug-and-play day one starters and look like good fits. The draft doesn't have any surefire, can't-miss top five picks at tackle, but has some intriguing depth and quite a few guys that Poles might like. And then we move on to the center position. I think it's clear we need an upgrade from Sam Mustafer. Lucas Patrick was hurt all year, and even though he might be back along with Doug Kramer, we need stability at the center position. There are a couple of free agent options. My favorite is Garrett Bradbury. The draft features a ton of quality centers, though. Guys like John Michael Schmitz, Jarrett Patterson, Steve Avila, Ricky Stromberg, Luke Whippler, and Olu Oluwatimi. The draft has lots of depth at center and multiple players with starting potential that should be available into the third round and later. I think it's almost imperative that Ryan Poles takes advantage of the depth at center in this draft and takes at least one guy at some point in the draft. This brings me to my final position that should receive some kind of upgrade this offseason, wide receiver. This one is a bit different as the free agent class is relatively weak and the draft class also lacks top end talent. It's possible that a receiver addition could come via trade. Veterans like DeAndre Hopkins or Brandon Cooks make the most sense as they can be acquired without giving up much draft capital. That's the big thing here. The draft has a lot of options that could be around on day two but my favorite guy might be Field's former teammate at Ohio State, Jackson Smith Najigba. JSN was seen as a top 10 pick entering this year, but he missed almost the entire season with hamstring injuries and has slid down the board a bit. If Poles winds up with a chance to draft JSN, watch out. Receiver isn't quite as bad as any of the other positions I listed. We actually have some talent on the roster with Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, and Valus Jones, but we need another guy. Receiver is probably the toughest position to address because we almost need an alpha, someone to draw attention away from Claypool, Mooney, and Komet. I don't know if a rookie gets that done, but adding another weapon to the room is a must. Justin Fields in this passing attack has to take a step forward in 2023 if we want to be competitive. I believe the key to this entire offseason is fixing the trenches on the offensive and defensive lines. Three tech and pass rusher on defense, center and right tackle on the offensive line, as well as some depth on both sides too. The Bears were the worst team in the NFL at applying pressure on opposing quarterbacks. We were also terrible against the run. And then on the offensive side of the ball, we had some success running the ball, but our pass protection was abysmal. In order for Justin to take the next step as a passer, he needs to have at least league average pass protection. We weren't even close to that this season. I think even though a lot of fans focus on receiver as a top need, I think both lines are much more important. Considering how much work needs to be done on both lines, I think it has to be the priority this offseason, and there are multiple ways to address every position, whether it's draft or free agency. In a perfect world, I think we'd be able to address our three tech and right tackle in free agency at least, while attacking pass rusher and center in the draft. There is a lot of depth when it comes to pass rushers and potential centers in the draft, so if we could land a big defensive tackle like Deron Payne or Draymond Jones in free agency, paired with the right tackle like Jawan Taylor or Caleb McGarry, it would allow Poles to find the best pass rushers on draft day, as well as attack other positions like receiver, corner, and linebacker. We should be able to sign a lot of players in free agency, but I would start at 3-tech and right tackle due to the draft's depth at other positions of need. Next up in my free agency series, I will have my top 10 
free agent offensive tackles. It should be out in the next day or two. After that, I will do defensive end and centers as well. Also have another big Justin Fields video coming once I hit 10K subs, and I have a lot of coverage coming for the Senior Bowl. Stay tuned. Hit that like button for me. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. And until next time, bear down.